What's up, guys? Brian Kochi, Media Marketing Manager here at Whistle Realty, also owner at Red Tie Photography. I wanted to do some behind-the-scenes editing of a property um, in Lemon Grove. Um, wanted to share it with you guys all here. Give me a second while I share this in a few groups. And once we do that, we will start um, going through it. So... And one more here. If you guys do have any questions as I'm going through, um, please ask below um, and I'll be going through it. So um, what's up, Chris? What's up, Quaid? Um, first thing I'm going to do, I already actually went through and selected the images. Um, and I'll let you know my kind of thought process here. Um, if it's zero stars, it means I'm not going to bring it in. If it's one star, it means I want to bring it into Photoshop. Um, and if it's two stars, it's usually all I need to do is edit it in Lightroom. And if it's two stars with a red filter, that's how I um, say it's, I know it's only one layer, but that I need to um, bring it into Photoshop. So like for a sky replacement, Photoshop out of sign, something like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find all my one stars and I'm going to import these into Lightroom. So I have a thing called Auto Hotkey and let me show you my script. Uh, open. Where is it? Open with. Notepad. This is the script here and I'm going to actually post this on Facebook. That's my script for auto hotkey. The cool thing about that is I'm able to select them, uh, hit control and then forward slash the button right underneath backspace and it'll bring it all the way to open layers in Photoshop. This way I can just do this really quickly rather than right clicking and hitting open in Photoshop. This way works a lot better for me. So as I'm gonna go through this, This, this is going to take a couple minutes for it to load all up in Photoshop. So if you guys have any questions, this is a really good time to ask them. Because once I bring this up, I'll have some time to answer questions. If it's questions about what gear I have, if it's questions about, um, I don't know, anything. Uh, process, how I select images, anything like that, let me know. So selecting my layers, selecting my layers. Um, I also, when I do edit, I use a lot of uh, layer masks, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, and I use a lot of uh, blending tools like lighten, darken, um, things like that. So you'll see that I'm in the picture, but pretty soon that won't be an issue because I'll Photoshop me out. So if you guys are asking questions right now, I will get to them in just a second. I just want to get these all up and running so that way they can run in the background while I answer any questions you may have. I probably should have done this before I started the, the video, but I want to show you the whole process. So let me bring Photoshop over. There we go. So now you're going to see it opening up new layers. Roy, I agree. Louie is the man. Hey, Jody Lynn. What's up, Steve, Rebecca? Um, I'm going to send someone a message on Instagram. They asked uh, that I uh, let them know, or they asked about how I blend. Um, So I'm letting him know on Instagram. All right, let's see. Any questions here come up yet? I don't think so. All right, so this will just take a couple more minutes to 
load up. I think the next time I do something like this, I'm going to do it on YouTube Live. I'm going to try and kind of play around with YouTube a little bit. All right. So as you see here in the photos, you'll see that I'll do several with um, me using the flash, but I'll also use an ambient layer, which means uh, just how it looks like in real life. Um, here, I got a lot of fan shadows that I need to fix, um, but I'll be able to use a lot of the ambient light to fix that. See, I have a fan shadow. You can't see where I'm pointing. Oh, I guess you can do this, huh? Fan shadow here. But this is the ambient. I actually like a lot about this. So this is going to be just for this area here. Brandon, what's up, buddy? This is going to be for most of it. It's a little bright, but I'll, I'll bring it down. So it's going to be, let me see how many more images we have. Um, it's going to be a couple more minutes as this loads up. If you guys, if you guys have questions, let me know. Um, I'll go real quick into a little bit of the gear I use because that's, uh, I know that people always want to know that. And I need to actually charge some batteries. So this is my flash here. This is the uh, Flashpoint 8200. Um, uses a battery like this, which I need to charge. That's what I use for my flash. And that's all there. Um, I also use my, this is my 5D Mark IV. Um, this is what I use for all my photos and a lot of my video stuff. So I'll charge that battery. Um, here I did use my drone, which I'll show you. Here is my so lucky. Um, this is my Mavic Pro. Let's see. And again, I just came back from a shoot in Bonita, so I got to charge everything up now. But Mavic Pro, and I need to charge this battery. I swear half of my job is charging new batteries. Um, I use the, I use a Benro tripod, which I like a better one, but it, I don't really need it. So I'm not really messing around with that right now. Um, I use the Manfrotto 405 head. And I use Cam Ranger and an iPad. Oh, I need to charge my iPad. iPad mini. So let me charge this. And looks like we're still got another like five or six images. Uh, I don't want to set up an iPad. Um, also, I use, where did I put it? Oh, it's over there, the Osmo, DJI Osmo. Um, I'm using this for some handheld stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, need to charge this guy. And so if you have questions, guys, I'm about to start um, through the process. I'm going to go image by image what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. But as we're waiting for that, charging up all my stuff. But if you guys have overall questions, I know people have questions as we get to it. Um, but if you have questions about anything in general, let me know. Hi, Jamie. iTunes. Ah, I hate iTunes. Every time you do it, you got to update it. iTunes comes out with a billion updates. Huh. All right. Next time I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wait until I import all these photos uh, because this takes forever and this isn't fun. But now i got to talk to you. What's new with you, Jamie? Um, all right. A lot of the ambient stuff here looks really good. Um, you'll also see... Let's bring this up. I got a lot of two-star images that I have to do sky replacements on. So that's a little tease for later. I'm going to be doing a bunch of sky replacements. 
So I do them a little differently. Um, so I'm excited to kind of show you how I do that. I know a lot of people use um, SkySwap Pro, I think. I think I, I even have it, but I didn't, I didn't like it. So, oops. Um, I use uh, something else. So almost there. Timothy, Jonathan, what up, guys? Almost there. We got a couple more that's got to load in, and then we will be good to go. If you guys have questions, let me know. All right. Steven, Jonathan, Timothy, how's it going? All right, we're almost there. Usually I, I start loading these up and then I walk outside because it's boring to watch them load. And now I realize I haven't done that for a while <laughs> of sitting here and watching it load. So we all get to do it together. It's exciting. It's not exciting. All right. I think, no, I still got a couple more. I know, isn't it a great view? I wish it was a little sunnier because we didn't, even with a, as uh, what it was, we didn't get that great of a, a we call it a window pull in the real estate photography game. Um, because it was just all gray outside. So I'll try and pull some stuff out, but it's kind of, it was just May gray and we're gonna get June gloom, but luckily we've been really lucky. Today it's um, it's actually finally getting nice and blue out. So that would have been nice this morning for my shoot, but that's why I have Photoshop for skies, right? So doo -doo 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 -doo, I think if we're lucky, this might be the last one. Again, I'm going to go through and do sky replacements after this. Maybe this is the last one. Um, so I'll be live for probably an hour or so. Um, and we're just about to get to the good part. Do you do the pictures for all your listings? Jamie, uh, it used to be only me. We've now hired Thomas, um, who is splitting the load with me right now, half and half, which has been awesome. So um, teaching him and training him and watching him grow to do some really cool stuff has been really fun and an interesting experience. Just there's little things that I forget to, to you know, I haven't, I didn't tell him about because we didn't think about it until he goes, oh, hey, now my flash won't fire or something like this. So, um, hi, Kimberly. Um, so it's, it's an interesting experience. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure this is the last one. This is the last room I shot. I might have had one more angle, I don't remember. All right, we're about to get to the fun part. I think. All right. Okay. So, I start out I like to start with easy places. Uh an easy room. So I like to use my first layer as just kind of a flat image. I have a couple issues here. I have the ceiling fan, shadow, and I have this here. So I have another layer here. I'm going to kind of use the light from the first or the second layer, bring that in, and then I like that there. Cool. Now I don't have that shadow. Now bring in the real light from the ambient. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit. Bring the highlights down. Bring the exposure up just a tad. And let's paint in kind of what the what the real look of the place looks like, right? Add some brightness there. 
Cool. That one's done for now. Easy. If you guys have questions, let me know, but I'm going lightning speed. Again, some things I don't like. Oops. Some things I don't like about this one is you have a fan shadow here and it's a little bright. So I like how that's there. No more fan shadow. And how do I view my history? Okay, that's better. I don't like a big gap from new layer to here, so. Okay. Brandon, I'm using the brush tool along with the, the layer mask. Jamie, I agree. I thought this was really cute. Um, they did a really good job matching the walls to the the furnishings. I thought this was really cute. They have another room, which I don't think I got in the photo with this kind of pattern. What do you call this pattern? I don't, I don't know. Jamie's no. But easy as that. Bingo. So I'm going to use this tool here to get the and brightness up over here and get rid of that fan shadow and then I like I'm gonna bring the shadow up a little bit here I like having um, the light kind of coming from the foot of the bed rather than behind the camera and give us some kind of texture there so kind of like that this is a little fuzzy here this is a little dark here but we're gonna fix that in the shot bring the highlights down shadows up a little more blue. There we go. Cool. This is a little too bright in here. Cool. Go with that. What's up, Doug? Jeremy, Nick, how's it going, guys? Shadows up, highlights down, good. I don't know why I did this one. I actually like some of the shadows here, which I think I'm going to paint over. Um, in uh, with the ambient, but it's okay. I'm using lighten here to lighten up the closet. What it's doing is it's looking for, at the whole image, and it's only making parts of the image that are lighter than the rest show up. That's why the only closet works. All right. What was that? Um, I think what I might do is do luminosity. Uh, luminosity, what it does is it is it transfers the brightness of what I'm doing. Oops. Um, but not the color. I was getting a little bit too much of the the yellow. And I didn't quite like that. So using luminosity to get me the brightness and the shadows, but not the the yellow color that it was giving me. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to say something weird there, but we won't go there. Get the shadow off of there. And also, I like to usually photograph from this area because this part here is bright. And now if we have light coming from there, it doesn't give quite that harsh angle. Good. I've got too many things going. 
starting to lag a little bit here. See, I like the brightness of this. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to, instead of panning over it, I'm just going to bring the opacity down, which still kind of fades in together. And what's back here? Is that, those are hooks. If it was a smudge, I'd Photoshop it out because it's hooks I'm not going to. Okay, so I like this one. What I did is I shot a flash up into the left side and then one up into the right side. And so um, this one I photoshopped, I did the flash you can see up here, um, which makes this too bright, but I like this side. Actually, I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. Um, and then this one I shot a flash over he here. Again, a little too bright, but I like this side. So I'm going to do a mask, use a G for gradient, go from white to transparent, and just do that. And now I have a nice even split. Um, I'm going to do, again, luminosity. I like a lot for when you're trying to get some nice even colors. Just bring it down. Cool. All right, I'm going to close some of these older ones. Should speed up Photoshop a little bit. If you guys have questions, I know I'm going real fast here, but let me know. And if you guys are enjoying this, um, if you guys wanted to share it with someone, either tag someone that you think would benefit or share it with a person or a group that you think would enjoy it, that'd be cool. If not, that's cool too. I'm fine. Cool, that's good. How did you do the gradient? Good question. Oops, it's too much. Um, gradient's my favorite trick right now, so I'll show you on this one. Uh, Human. So um, a gradient, I hit G, or you can hit the paint bucket tool. If you right click on the paint bucket tool, it'll go to gradient. The problem with gradients, and I'll show you this just real quick here, is if you do from white to black, and I do a gradient, it's only good. Say I wanted that part and I wanted this part. Look at the gradient here. It only shows the white to black portion of it. I can't do multiple, which sucks. So what I do is I have, do a black layer mask, and then I do white to transparent, which I think you can click on and go from white, and this side is, how do you do transparent? Opacity zero. Is how I made it transparent. So this side is white, this side is transparent. And now if I wanted, you know, say I wanted this part and I wanted this part, see now it's adding to it. Every little part I add is adding to it. So that's my favorite. Well, not my favorite. I don't use it all the time, but I, when I do use it, it comes really in handy. Uh, how do you open the layers into Camera Raw? Ooh, that is my favorite. Control Shift A for a PC. Mac, I think it's probably a... Uh, Control Alt or uh, Max Shift A, maybe. That's my favorite though. Control Shift A, bring it into Camera Raw. I used to go in and bring it into Light. I'd have to go back into Lightroom and resave it, and it's a pain in the ass. I don't want this so bright. I don't like it dark either. I'm going to fix that. I did this because I wanted... Uh, I wanted the... What's this called? The window? And I need something for... Haha! Thank you, Daniel. And you're welcome, human. Am I saying that right? Who man? I think. I hope so. If I'm not, please correct me. Names are important to me. I'm not great with them, but they're important to me. So if I'm saying your name wrong, please let me know. Uh, I like vibrance better than saturation. Saturation pulls up the yellow. 
Vibrance keeps the yellow pretty contained. And painting my ambient here. This gives a much more realistic look to everything, but still keeping the windows nice and, and see-through like I want them. Cool. Actually, I'm recording this from my screen. Um, cool. You can actually, this is going to stay on Facebook here, so you can watch it whenever, but you're welcome to record it too. That's fine. I don't care. If this helps you, then I've done my job. Well, actually, my job is to photograph listings um, and do all the photos. But if I helped you, that makes me happy. So <laughs> I don't know what I like. I don't know why I did this shot. Because I hate this fan shadow here, so I don't think I'm going to use that one. I like this part right in here. I used to hate shadows. I would try and always get my my uh, photos really flat, and then I've learned to really embrace shadows and have some nice direction to images. And I, just, I love good shadows, right? These ceiling fat shadows right here, ceiling fan shadows, bad shadows, but good shadows I like. Good. Good with that. Cool, cool. Um, when I hit Control S, it saves it back into Lightroom as a TIFF file. Um, but I have to have Lightroom open in order for it to do that. So um, that's a little another little trick I use. Okay, I like that as my flat layer. I don't like that one at all. And this, again, black, and I'm going to do a gradient, white to transparent, you see up at the top. A little bit more. Good. This is still bright here. Oops. Still bright here, but I'll take care of a lot of that in the... Down. With my ambient layer. I love ambient layer, too. It's something that I've been utilizing more and more Especially a little bit of that glow is nice. I like a little bit of shadow or a little reflection here. Again, I used to keep it super flat. Now I do it to where it doesn't blow out, but having some gives it a little bit of a definition too. Hey, Carrie. Okay, powering through here. We got we got a lot more to go. So again, I use my flat. This oops. If you hold down Alt and click on the eyeball, this will show you, it'll hide every layer but that layer. So this is my super flat image. Again, I don't like that. I don't like this. But I'm not in the photo, so I don't have to Photoshop me out. I'm going to use this shot that I did to get some really cool texture on that fireplace. I'm going to use this shot to get, again, this. I said I don't like this. But now I have some shadows coming towards the camera, which I really like. And my ambient's going to cover this and this here. A little bit brighter. Highlights down. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Bring the brightness in here. Good. Even that out a little bit. Cool. Please tell us a bit about your camera flash settings and your philosophy regarding lighting a room. I do my lighting with speed light. In the end, I have 10 to 14 layers. Um, Alkis, great question. So I use, I mentioned it earlier, my 8200, my Godox 80, or it's Flashpoint 8200. Um, depending on the size of the room, you know, if we get to do a twilight shoot, I'll have a lot more. Um, but I try and oh shucks. Um, I try and keep it just to a couple layers. Otherwise, you're editing forever. Um, I gotta see if I did a shot. Oh, this is my shot without. Okay. 
Um, so I kind of, I try to, um, first I shoot my ambient shot, then I shoot my flash shots, I expose for the windows, um, and I kind of go from there. Uh, you can kind of see where I do my layers and where I flash. This one's going to be kind of weird to start with, but again, my, my shot here, I try and get it flat. And then I'm going to light different parts of the room. So, light this here. And I kind of go around with my flash knowing, okay, I want to light this area. It's just like a puzzle, right? You piece it together. 10 to 14 layers is probably too much for most of what you're going to want to do. At least it's more than I want to do. I like this for the couch. Um, I set my flash settings usually and then don't change them much after that. And I utilize ambient for a lot. I, almost always I use the ambient for my ceiling. You can see I use it there. Um, I like to paint a little bit on the couch. Oops. Um, the wall is a little bit on the floor. But I use a lot of ambient. So my first suggestion is probably um, try a little more, more uh, give a little more trust to ambient. Um, what's my average exposure value difference for your ambient? I So I set my ISO and my aperture. Usually ISO 320 aperture, 5, 6 to 7, 1. And then I use my ambient for whatever matches. Usually it's about a... I can tell you exactly what this is. Um, this is my TIFF. So... Um, I think it's I. So this is 1 6th at f5.6 ISO 320. And then I go to 1 1 60th. So keep the ISO and aperture the same typically. Um, and so I don't do it based on 1 over or anything like that. I just do it based on what looks good, Daniel. Does that answer your question? I don't love... Again, it was super, like, you just want to... I wasn't getting a bunch of um, view out the window. That's kind of what I... Even when I stopped down, I just got dark trees, but still blown out skies. So... Oh no, Louie, you're in my shot. It's alright, I'll fix it. It doesn't really matter that I photoshopped him out there or not. Um, I just did it because I didn't want him to be ghosting in another shot. See here, I tried to to get a little bit more out of the windows. Just it, it didn't give me too much more. What is that? Um, I think I'm gonna go light in here. Nope, I'll go normal. Shock shift A to get uh, camera raw. Something weird happened there. I don't know what that was. Okay. Control Shift A, camera raw. Bring out my shadows. I want this here. Good. And then do I have. No. Usually I would like this room in the back, but I don't think I did. Okay, again, use the ceiling, paint that in, that's nice, oops, too much there. Again, a little brightness on the floor is good, when I did it here it blew it out, and I like that. 
So. Okay. Good. What's up, Andy? Philip, a long time to talk to you, Philip. Here, I like that better. I don't like the couch on that, but I think is that a Python? Nope. Oh, look at that. That's much better. Hopefully, oops. Need to brighten this too much. Shadows up. Paint that in here. And I think, hopefully, this one's the couch. Good. I like this couch shot. Good. And again, ceiling. I like the little lights here in the, the wet bar. I want to get rid of my shadows that I caused. Get some realistic look there. Um, good. And I'll probably make that a little bit brighter in Lightroom. Marlon, um, I think I'm going to go YouTube live. So this is a kind of a fun plug. If you guys want to find me on YouTube, um, what am I on YouTube? I think I'm Brian Kochi on YouTube. Um, if you guys want to find me on YouTube, my channel, Brian Kochi. Um, if you guys want to subscribe there, the next Facebook or next video I'm going to do is going to be a Facebook live. So, or a, face, a, a live edit of this. So um, maybe... Today or tomorrow, I think, will be my next one. Probably not today. Probably closer to tomorrow. But YouTube, I think, is uh, something I want to start pursuing a little bit more. Um, Sarah, yeah, when I f got this job, I uh, we tried to first do it on a laptop, and it just didn't work. Um, the speed I needed was, I needed a, a hard computer. So I had my buddy Doug um, design and make me a computer. And I said, look, it just needs to be as, as fast as I can. And so as nerdy and dorky as I am, I don't know the specs of it. Um, but I think I have 32 gigs of RAM, solid state drive. Um, we really tried to push it hard. So again, here's my gradient layer again. I love gradient layers in situations like this because it gives me a nice even fall off. There. Lighten this back. Again, we got some ugly things here, right? Ceiling fan shadows on both sides. Shadows here, sh shadows here. But the ambience, actually, I like to do a shot right from the middle a lot of times because we can uh, get rid of a lot of these ugly shadows. Oops. Um, when we're kind of painting them like this. And then bring the highlights down, shadows up, vibrant, like that. And again, paint my ceiling in, good. Get some of my real ambient looking stuff here. Cool. Uh, let's see here. When are you going to have another live? Okay, inbox and confirm, please. I'm going to take pictures, but I don't know how to do it at this point. Hit. Yeah, and I was. Let's do it. I just didn't know if there's stuff that I don't. So I have an i7 uh, Intel processor, the 4790K, 4 gigahertz. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, 
I don't know. That stuff. Um, thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Uh, expert in Photoshop, but not in Lightroom together. Marlon, I'm going to show you a cool thing of going back into Lightroom in a second. How Do you take another ambient exposures? My, no. Uh, Alcus, great question. I know a lot of people have a similar question to that if I do a range of ambient, and I know photographers that do. Um, sometimes I will, um, but most often I do not. Um, I usually take my one ambient shot, um, but if like the ceiling's really blown, like if the ceiling's really bright and the the inside or like the, the rest of the room is really dark, then I'll do one for the ceiling and one for the, the couches and that sort of stuff. But usually I just do one ambient shot. Okay, so again, my first shot is a shot flash behind the camera where I'm not in it at all. That way it's a lot easier to, to light things um, gradient than to Photoshop me out of things. I'd rather Photoshop things in. Does that make sense? So right now I'm painting this in rather than Photoshopping me out. Ooh, look at that light on those chairs. That looks really good. Light in there. This is the same thing I do for window poles, except it in reverse, right? So in window poles, if, um, if you're familiar at all with that, you uh, you flash the window and then darken it. Um, here I just lighten the other room and use lighten. That was not explanatory. For those that know what I'm talking about, you probably have an understanding. For those that don't, that was very confusing. Sorry. Let me close this a few more of these. So where am I at? Oh good, only a couple more here. And then the sky replacements. I know you guys are looking forward to that. Everyone loves a good sky replacement. Again, flash behind the camera, not in it. Get it nice and flat. Get some ugly reflections and shadows, but I don't care about that because this is where I Photoshop in the areas, right? Gradient, have that. Um, what do I like here? I like this in here. That looks good. A little bit bright, so let's uh, bring the highlights down. Shadows up. Good. Marlon, I saw you asked another question. I'll get to you in one second here. Love, I love getting um, light on the front side of chairs and not the back side. It gives a really nice depth to the image. I just love it. Um, can you show your raw with you in there so we shoot? Yeah, so, so you're seeing them as I open them up real quick. Um, it's, it's, uh, they're in there. So I'll, I'll point it out next time. So, someone's doing a tour of the office. I think they might hop in. Let's see, there we go. Cool. Um, I'm, am I using Cam Ranger? Yes, I am. So, again, um, here I am not in the image, but I like that one better. So bring the highlights down, shadows up, get it nice and flat. Um, see here, here you can see me in them. There we go. So I did this to get this area lit. 
think I'm going to use a lot of ambient on this one. I love it. The shadows here, that looks nice. And ambient. Let's bring the shadows up. Highlights down, shadows up. Exposure up a little bit. Oh, I saw a question about a tilt shift lens. That'll be fun. Oh, wait. Let me lighten this room. Lighten. Painting that in. Good, good, good. A little under cabinet lighting showing. Cool. So, we got some questions. Cam Ranger, I haven't started doing this, but I'm learning through videos. Marlon, that's good. Alcus asked, do I have a tilt shift lens? Are there any considerations for when using tilt shift lens instead of a normal wide angle lens? Alcus, I do not have a tilt shift lens. On a 24, consider whether I should I buy a 17 with an extender. Uh, Sam Chen, who does amazing work in San Diego, um, he uses a tilt a 17 and just does a 17 and then um, crops. So um, he does some of the high end work, the highest end work in San Diego, if not the highest end. So where I would, and oops, what did I just do there? Um, so yeah, 17 is smart. What are you at? Eight? Is this how small? Uh, Vladimir, I'm about 6'3". Um, so... But it's probably a mix of showing the the, uh, the angle of the camera plus my height. Uh, this is a normal 16 to 35. This is a 16 to 35 f4 image stabilized lens, which you don't need image stabilization. Actually, it's worse if you have image stabilization on. Um, I always turn mine off. Otherwise, when you're doing ambience and stuff, it's going to give you some weird reactions. Um, so, but. Tilt shifts are great. Um, I just I don't use them. Um, I don't like that you can't zoom. I also don't like that they're three, two grand, and I don't have it. So <laughs> that's that's my story. Let's see. I blew out the floor here quite a bit. I'd like to get some more detail in it, but I don't I don't think I can. I think it's gone. But the fact that it still shows there's detail in other areas, I'm okay with. I prefer it not to be blown. That's a little brighter than I want it to be. Um, but I, I honestly think that's a personal thing. I don't think someone's going to see that and go, well, now I don't like it. Um, see, we'd have a good view if we had something other than gray. But do what you do. Good afternoon, Maria. I'm curious if anyone, if you guys went to my YouTube and subscribed, let me know. I'm curious if I had any new subscribers. If you just search my name, B R Y A N K O C I, look, I already got a new subscriber. I'm basically famous. So that's cool. Um, look at that. I was at 33, now I'm at 34. Um, I've used YouTube for the longest time as just kind of a content, a place to put content, but I'm definitely working a little bit more on um, giving it some do, especially on our other channels, our, our Whistle Realty channel, which uh, is my employer, um, and our East County Eats channel, which is our video series uh, featuring East County restaurants. So I'm definitely giving it more... Um, more airtime now. Um, and so I probably should do a little bit more with my personal channel too. So if you guys want to like it, feel free. If you don't, that's fine. This is not my favorite shot. Definitely blown here. What, are, what is that? Let's 
going to love this shot. Let's see. Oh, so now, Alcus, now you want me to to repeat my competitor's name? You really want me to like give him some airtime, huh? It's Sam, S A M C H E N. He does great work. And um, the cool thing is, in San Diego, we got to, oh, shucks. Um, it looks like I opened these as two. So let me open these back up. Just did this one. So. What I did there is I accidentally opened um, two different images as one set of layers, and that would make for a difficult picture. So I didn't. Alright, I'm about needing a break. But no, I'm going to keep plugging through. Alright, let's do this here. Alright, let's start with that. Get a little more direction. I like the look on the seat here a little bit better. Some direction, right? It's a very similar shot. Oh, I actually like that seat better. And that. Ooh, I like this a lot here. Give that some. Some love there. And ambient. Again, bringing the highlights down, shadows up. Yep, you're getting the pattern. I actually like the, the ambient shadows of that chair a lot. So. I like the, the look of the couch flash better than this. So I'm going to leave that as that. Um, Marlon, no, I don't turn off all. I actually turn all lights on and leave them all on. Um, there's been a time or two where I've turned them off. Um, but I don't typically turn them off unless I'm trying to get a reflection gone or something like that. But I, I start with them all on and uh, and leave them that way. Let's see. So I can turn these both to lighten. And you guessed it, highlights down, shadows up. Get it nice and flat there. Paint in my ceiling, because that's what I like. Paint in this chair, it looks nice. Cool. Cool with that. Nice and airy in the next room. Vladimir, silly question. So when you take your ambience expo ambient exposure, you just turn off your flash and then turn it on, or is there an option to turn off flash within the cam ranger? Vladimir, great question, um, because it's not silly. Um, I actually, so I have this uh, the XT32, and what I have here, it, and it's a smart trigger, so, oops, and I left it on. 
Um, meaning with cannon, if you had it on with dumb triggers, right? If you had it on um, live view, then it wouldn't um, take a flash shot. But um, when you and when you turn it off live view, then it would take the flash. I got into a uh, process and I like doing it that way a lot. Um, well, then when I got this trigger, whether I had live view on or off, it would still trigger. So I got this little Nikon adapter, so it turns it into a dumb trigger, basically just saying, so long story short, I have this, it's like eight bucks. Um, so when I have live view on, the flash won't fire. When I have live view off, the flash will fire. Or you can just turn it on and off. That's not that hard, but I don't like it that way. So I did it my way. That was a great question though, because that was something I struggled with for a little bit, just because it was my process. Okay. Oh, I like I like the couch, I think, here. Let's see, I like I like this here. And I like the couch. So you lighten up this. This is just using my ambient shot. Darken that a little bit. And oh, I actually want to brighten that up a little bit. Okay, last shot until we get to X year, which is going to be a lot of sky replacements because we didn't have a nice bright day. So again, start with my boring flash shot. Use again, photoshopping me out or painting around me is a pain. So I just have a shot where it's pretty flat and boring, and then I paint in around me. So obviously I'm going to avoid this area, right? But I'm going to paint in here. Um, if I if you hold Shift and click on the layer mask, it turns it off, so you can see what it looks like without it. I do that a lot. You've probably seen that back and forth. Okay, light. Oh. Parts. Let's see if we can just turn these to lighten. Okay. Okay, and my ambient exposure. All right, I think we're about there. How many pictures of average do you take in one room? Depends on the room. Kitchens, I try and get at least three. Uh, if it's just if it's a three bedroom place, you know, if there's a the small bedrooms, I do usually one. Master bedroom, I try and do at least two or three. Um, yeah. Kitchen three, living room, try and do three, two or three. So. Okay, now, before we go and edit the rest of these, close all, I'm going to open up my two star six rated and I'm going to edit these. So edit in Photoshop. This is what I'm going to sky replacement. Therapy? That's not it. It's opening on the screen. You can't see it. That was kind of cool. All right, I'll just give it a minute. Open this one. Oh, you can't see. This one, and this one, and this one. Cool. And we're back. Is there a setting silent live view shoot in the camera that allows you to trigger flashes with live view on? Alcus, maybe. I don't know. Um, that would be an interesting thought. All right, you ready for some sky replacements? I don't know why, but I like to duplicate the base layer. 
um, just so I'm not working on that layer itself. Oh, that's right. I need. Where are my libraries? Window libraries. That's what I was looking for. Um, I am going to Photoshop. This is part of the sign. Um, instead of clone stamp, I'm just going to do J, which is the the brush tool. That's easy. Let's take history and bring it back over here somewhere. Okay. Um, I am going to pick a sky, place it about there, and I'm going to do a black mask over it. <laughs> Jamie, it takes a while to do this. Um, then I'm going to click on my layer. You have to have, you can't have anything below it. It has to be um, empty below it. And then select, select and mask. And then I'm going to select the sky. Um, pretty rough, and then I go into this. This is the Refine Edge tool. I'm just going to paint over all this, so that way it, I don't know how it knows, but it knows what the sky is and what leaves are. I don't know exactly how, but it does a pretty good job. Why are you not zooming out? Okay, so now I have out, I output to selection, go to my black mask again, G for gradient, again, white to um, clear, and I just drag down. Boom! It's a little pink. Let's bring a little bit more. Too much. Go with that. How many, <laughs> Jamie, how many houses are you doing? I'm still on this one. Um, it's been an hour. An hour is not bad for. for uh, a property. So again, I duplicate it. Usually, I duplicate it when I'm editing something on it. Here, I'm not really editing anything on it. Um, but I just don't like messing with the the main layer. I like to be able to go back to it. Uh, black mask. Click on the layer. Select select a mask. Choose the top one, which is just a quick selection tool. Select. Then the, the R for Refine Edge, I think that's what it is. Paint in there, paint in there. And you can see, I don't change these anymore. I had them, this is what I've had for a while, so rate transparency 54%, smooth, um, maybe it's pretty zero. I think the only thing I've done is output to selection. Gradient from there, top to bottom. Boom, pretty easy. Um, a little too great. It's better. Marlon, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> From where to Photoshop? Uh, Marlon, I'm lost. What what are you uh, questioning about? So hide that. Let's do this guy here. Cool. Uh, again, choose this layer. Select. Select and mask. Click the sky. Use this one, or you can just hit R. Zoom in. I want to see if I can try and select that if I can. Gradient from the corner. Oops. Choose the sky mask. Gradient down. Cool. It's good to me. some color to it, bring some contrast to it. Select, select a mask. Um, 
use R. I don't, again, I don't, I'm not even like, I'm not even being gentle with this. I'm just kind of covering it up. And it, it knows. Power lines are a pain in the butt for me. This looks like it's working. Because um, I want to leave them in. For real estate, you have to leave them in. Um, I mean, they're there. You can't, you can't Photoshop them out because they're there. So power lines are the things that give me a little bit of trouble. Well, you just got to try and uh, select them. Gradient top to bottom. Sometimes it does that. There we go. Well, remember I said I usually like to duplicate my image? Well, I forgot this time. But it's okay. I've been alright so far. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a lot of sky replacements, I'll forget which ones I've used. And so I'll just, what I did there is I just flipped it horizontally. Select, select a mask. Oops. That's why, so I'll, you always got to click the bottom layer. Otherwise, well, how I do it. Otherwise, it masks the wrong thing and it does weird stuff. So, be careful of painting over the house. I find a lot of times if I paint over the house, it will give me a. I'll start painting over the, the chimney or the the trim. Um, Mark, great question, and I did explain that earlier, but you just joined, which is a great way to uh, lead in with that. So, oh, um, I'm hitting G for gradient. Um, it's also, if you right click on the paint bucket tool, you can click gradient tool. Then I'm choosing from white to transparent. So what I did is, this one is my white, opacity 100. This one is opacity zero. So that way it goes to transparent. And I like that. I feel it gives it a more realistic vibe. Um, if it goes from darker to brighter, that's how real life works. Well, then I appreciate your sharing it. Thank you. Shadows up, contrast. That looks about right. You want to try to typically line up the horizon here with the horizon here. I usually go a little under um, because I don't want accidentally to show up my mountains in a house that doesn't really have mountains. Um, that can be... <laughs> I don't know what the penalty is, but I don't want to find out. Um, I would never intentionally mis misrepresent a house like that, looking like it has mountain views when it doesn't. Um, but I've almost accidentally done it, so just be careful of that if you're using skies with stuff in them, buildings or anything like that. Again, G, gradient, white to transparent, top down to the bottom. Good. Almost there. Three more. All right, duplicate the layer, which I haven't done the last couple. I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Let's get some color in here, get some contrast. Bring the shadows up so I can get some color in my trees. Exposure down a little bit. But one thing I like to do is I like to uh, get my yellow hue, bring a little bit more green. See, if I bring it green, it looks really bad. Um, but bring a little bit more green. And usually I'll bring the luminance down a bit. It didn't do much in this one at all. So never mind. Sometimes it gives you a little bit of a greener grass. Again, not not I don't ever want to misrepresent. Um, but sometimes the lighting, you guys all know, the lighting makes it look flatter than it really is. 
that's the benefit in shooting raw is it gives you more flexibility to make it look appropriate at the end. This is going to be pretty easy. Gradient down. Oops. Make sure I'm on the right mask. And I need more. A lot of times I'll bring the vibrance up quite a bit on my sky. Still getting. This is too yellow. Let's go to my saturation on my yellow and bring that down. Okay. Good, good. Okay, I'll flip this backwards because I've been using a lot of skies. I don't want to repeat over and over. I've done that before where I, um, oops, wrong one, where I've flipping through pictures and I realize I did the same photo on both of those, or same sky photo. And then it looks funny when it looks like, you know, the camera's moved, but the sky hasn't moved. Oops. Sometimes what I'll do also, just to help my selection, is I'll bring this in here and I'll make it pretty, pretty obvious of what I, you see here I've darkened these and I've blown out the highlights a lot. Because then when I go to select, select a mask, it's a little easier. Hit OK. Now I'll just make that one go away. Bring my gradient. I need more, more vibrance on here. And I need to bring the shadows up in here. See how these get pretty dark. Cool. Hey, my last one. Not quite done yet. I still have uh, Lightroom work to do. I don't use this guy very often because it's a lot of clouds, but I think it'll work here. that. Let's get me some more oomph on here. Cool. Did you do any pre-processing in Lightroom? Uh, Mark, I have an import preset that I have that basically is um, a lens correction and I think it brings the highlights down a little bit, but other than that, no. All right, so now I'm going to take off all my filters. I'm going to, this is this is super important guys, so um, this is a huge way of time saving. Everything I edited in Photoshop when I saved it came back here as a TIFF. So usually you have to do this drop down to get the, the file type. I click TIFF, I select them all, and mark them all as two stars. Now all the ones that I edited in, Light, in Photoshop are now two stars in Lightroom, but there's also some two stars that I didn't edit in Photoshop. Um, so now I'm going to find all my two stars. You can see I have 45. But remember, or I'll show you actually, we go to the uh, red, you'll see here's the one I edited in Photoshop. And then here's its twin without the sky replacement. So I have to go through and I hit zero to, to remove this out of my two stars all the ones without the sky replacements. These ones are very obvious. Okay. Now, I have my two stars. These first couple are drone, so I'm not going to select those. But the rest, select them all, develop. I have my full bump preset uh, courtesy of Rich Baum. He's gone over this several times. 
but it's hot. you can see this is the settings I have, and I think they're the same that he has. Exposure up, contrast up, highlights down, shadows up, whites up, blacks down, clarity, vibrance, saturation. And I think this is number for number what his is. Minus 83, plus 74, it's very specific. It doesn't need to be, it's just a good starting point. Um, but I think I just copied what he did exactly and then kind of tweaked it from there. And now I do my final tweaks in Lightroom. Um, and in this full bump, it has the, is it here? Where is it? Transform. It has the, oh, I didn't do it on these ones. Um, has the vertical select, I think. Is it, oh, no, it's auto. So that way it straightens my verticals. Another thing I'll have open is yellows. A lot of times I'll bring down the saturation of the yellows a bit. Okay, looking good. Bring down this, bring the saturation up a little. Good. See, I like this. This has a little bit more yellow in it. I have a preset called to yellow. Um, that just brings the yellow saturation, yellow and orange saturation down. It's still too yellow. Bring that, oh, that's better. Doesn't have to match perfectly, but I want it closer than it was. Bathroom, bathroom. Good. Oh, see this one, the auto vertical got me a little goofy on it. That's right. Oh, because the ceiling's goofing it up. See, this is way too yellow. Better. I like this. I'm almost done here, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. This looks kind of funny, doesn't it? keep thinking maybe my uh, camera moved, but it's just how that setup was. Bring down the yellow and the orange. Good. Bring up exposure a bit. Good. And actually, I think our vertical is a little funny. Oh, it looks better. To yellow. Uh, when I do a one-point perspective, meaning I'm shooting straight on, I like to hit the full here. I don't typically do much in here, but I am going to... We're getting some... This is getting a little dark. So I'll just brighten this up a little bit. Not typically something I'll do in Lightroom, but it's pretty easy. And let's crop the oops. Let's crop this. And again. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Crop it just a little more. Looking good. Um, I'm going to do a gradient here where I bring the exposure down. It's still bright there, so that's better. That's better. Do you shoot a gray card or shoot auto white balance? Mark, I use auto white balance. Gray card just 
I've actually bought at least one before. Um, it's just never has worked for my workflow. I like my images nice and bright. Whoa. Let's turn that off. To yellow. To yellow. And God, that yellow is really pops. That's too yellow too. And this one is a little too yellow. Let's turn that off. Okay, I'll show you my too yellow. What it does is it brings the saturation of the yellow down and the saturation of the orange down. And that's that. Last thing we're going to do is reorder them. So make sure you are on the image or the, the folder. Um, I like to show the front of the house first. And I like it as we're kind of we're walking in, right? So a couple drone shots, then this shot, then I like this one better. Oh, sometimes, I don't know why, but sometimes you got to go to stacking, unstack. I don't know why it stacks them funny sometimes. I'm going to put these at the end. Extra drone shots. I like to walk right into kind of a, let's see, we'll probably do... See, I walked in from up here, but we walk into the kitchen is the entrance. So I like to show the kitchen, living room areas. Um, before we go, like, see the first shot I did was the bedroom, but a little, a little bed. I don't want to do that. Um, kitchen, do, 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 living room. I want to go to, where's that green room? Here it is. And I bring these in. Then I show the little dining area. Let's put that here. Then I like to do master bedroom, master bathroom. The, I, this is perfect. So I do bedroom, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom. This is pretty obvious to show that it's two different bedrooms. But sometimes if it's a vacant room, it looks very similar. Um, so I like to separate them with bathroom. Rename them all as Canyon Road. This is my setup. My settings have numbers, Canyon Road, and then the date. Hit OK. And then I export them. That is from almost start to finish. I didn't show you me selecting them. But that's about an hour and a half or so. It takes me to edit one property. That's it for me, guys. I'm done. I've got East County Eats to film today and more places to shoot. So, peace.